Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode on Rare Root of Joy, that's this channel that you may have stumbled across. And if you've done that for the first time, welcome. My name is Sharon. Uh, I am a plant enthusiast from Melbourne, Australia. And on this channel, I talk about tips, tricks, uh, covering houseplants, orchids, sometimes out, even outdoor plants get into the garden a little bit. But if you're not new here, welcome back and thank you for coming back to the channel. Now, in my last video, I made a promise. I said that I would do a little bit of an orchid haul video because in September, I went to the Ozkov Orchid Spectacular. And this particular plant show purports to be the largest or biggest, largest or biggest? Not sure what term is right there largest or biggest orchid show in the southern hemisphere now whether that's true or not i don't know but we'll go with it and i walked away with all of these plants so that's what i'm going to introduce you to today <music> All right, which one's first? Okay, so I guess I should give you just a little bit of an overview here. I decided, well, I didn't decide until I actually got there on the day and I saw all these wonderful dendrochylum orchids. And I'm like, I only have one. And I do have one. And I set it back pretty badly. But it's, so it's recovering downstairs in uh, a really nice warm space. But I love the dendrochylum. You know, they have these beautiful long, flower stems and tiny little flowers on them they're so gorgeous when they're in flower i'll put up a couple of pictures as we go of the ones that i got but i had ex i have now extended my dendrochylum collection significantly so that's all these over here that look like grass and if you're not careful you could easily mow them down if you have them outside but I'm going to move these over here and I'm going to start with these two in the middle here. Now, these are the same orchid. It's a Stellus Portiana and it's coming into the end of its flowering. And I'll bring the camera in closer so you can see. But this orchid is a bit of an enigma. You cannot find a lot of information about it online. Uh, there's very, very little about it. It is a very rare orchid, uh, not commonly found in con cultivation, but it was present at the Ozkov show. And I've got a thing lately about miniature plants and miniature flowers, and this is very miniature. Uh, as you can see, th th now these leaves remind me a little bit of Mazda Valia leaves in the way that they're quite paddly and glossy and quite lovely. But this is a very small orchid. It will remain small. It's going to sort of spread out if it grows well. And these beautiful little tiny, tiny, tiny flowers. They're just so lovely. But yet when I looked for information online, I couldn't really find any. It's got a more common name of Porsche Stellus. And that was given to it by a, was it German or Austrian? Austrian botanist in Brazil in the late 1800s. So, but beyond that, really, um, there's very little information about it. Uh, these flowers are photosensitive. So they open with light and then they close at night. Um, and I have observed that myself, actually, when it was in flower. I mean, it is technically in flower, but the flowers are starting to, to die off. It's coming to the end of its uh, flowering, flowering season. But yeah, my plan with this is to put it in one pot and allow it to sort of spread out and become a nice specimen. And why buy one when you can buy two? I think these were the only two that were there. Maybe there was another one. But yeah, I'm so delighted to have this little guy in my collection. Um, see how it goes over the next few months. Hopefully I'll get it right. But yeah, I'm keeping it indoors under a grow light in a very warm area of the, of the house. And it's already putting out lovely new growth. So that's a brand new leaf. That's a brand new leaf. And this thing was not in flower when I first got it. Uh, this, this flowering is technically my flowering. Although I'm given I only got it in September, I'm not really sure that I can take credit for that. But hey, take, take your wins when you can get them. Okay, so now on to the next one. So this one is Dendrochylum javierensi. Javier? Javierensi. That's what it says on the tag. 
but I do know it's also called uh, Dendrochylum javieri. Javieri? Hopefully I'm pronouncing that okay. So this is a beautiful orchid native to the Philippines. And this again is another Dendrochylum. Its flower or inflorescence is a beautiful yellow. It's a pretty robust orchid, pretty minimal maintenance and can tolerate a whole wide range of conditions indoors. As long as it's indoors, it's a, it's a warmer weather orchid. So this really grows like any other house plant. What I do notice about these is these are very thick stems or very thick leaves. I do apologize. Very thick. You can tell that they're quite hardy. They're quite, um, you know, you're going to have a hard time breaking that. They've got quite a nice gloss to them. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing how this one does. Um, I think it'll do pretty well in my conditions. And again, I'm keeping this and all of the dendrochylum under a grow light in the warmest area of the house. As I said, they are native to the Philippines and it does. And they, they, they grow up to about an elevation of around 300 from what I can tell, 300 metres that is. So that um, means that it does like the warmer weather and I'm keeping these in a really nice nook under a grow light where it gets quite warm in that little area and it gets quite, it stays quite humid in that little microclimate too because I've got some of these sitting in a very small amount of water which then creates a, a bit of a more humid microclimate. Now onto what I call my grasses. A little bit. Uh, probably a little weed in there that I didn't necessarily want. So this is Dendrochylum banksii and this one has almost like a burnt orange, bright burnt orange flower to her. Again, there's another Dendrochylum. She is a native to New Zealand. And right now there are these orchids that I got from the, the same cellar. Uh, these are right now sitting in a mixture of sphagnum moss. Uh, a little bit of this, um, which I'm not a big fan of but I do know very, very popular, the polystyrene bits. And there's a little bit of moss on top. And they all seem to be pretty happy with that. You know, I've had these now um, almost a couple of months. Uh, they, they seem to be very, very happy. They're starting to push out some new growth, finishing the end of their flowering. They're not complaining at all, as far as I can tell. So yeah, I hope that they continue to, to I'm going to keep them in these pots, even though I'm not a big fan of the media that they're in. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, I'm going to struggle with the name of this one. Tiongianum, Dendrochylum Tiongianum. And this one, and this one has a lilac flower. You can see here, it's actually finished its flowering. It had finished its flowering when I got it. I did not actually see that. But all of these little, what you would look to see as deader pieces, each of those was filled with flowers. So again, I'll get in close so you can see that. But yeah, I mean, if you put this outside and put it in your garden, not that you'd do that, but if you did, you easily mistake that for just some, just some grass. I think, and the Telenium red lip is actually even worse. So might talk about these together. So the Telenium aurum, uh, which this is labeled, apparently Telenium red lip might come with a whiter kind of flower, an off-white flower, uh, may come with a red flower. Again, this one was in flower at some point prior to the show. I haven't cut the little, you know, dead flower spikes off yet. So, so I don't know what they will look like when they are in flower. Well, I kind of have an idea. I'll put a photo on screen. You'll probably be seeing photos on screen as we go through these. But yeah, you can see the medium that they're in. Not the most fantastic media. But again, they are not complaining. So I am not fixing. Not right now. So the other thing I will actually say about all of these dendrochylum that I've got is that they are species orchids. There are no hybrids amongst this little collection here. Remain to be seen as to whether they will enjoy my conditions or the conditions that I could provide them or not. It may very well be that I end up putting a little humidifier in there or even increasing the humidity, finding ways to increase the humidity even more in that space. The other orchids that are in that space certainly won't complain about a little extra humidity. Quite been quite dry. Um, here in Melbourne, even though it has been raining and it has been relatively crap. But yeah, we're, we're just going to have to see how they go. But yeah, I mean, I, I love this sort of grassiness. You, know, you can run your fingers through it and just go, oh, that's nice. So, well, maybe that's me. Maybe I should just not touch the orchids as much. But I just can't help myself. It's so lovely. 
So yeah, dendrochylum, tenellum, red lip, let's see whether that remains to be seen, and dendrochylum tiongianum, the last two extra new dendrochylum orchids for my collection. Now these flowers are pretty much almost at the end of their heyday, but I wanted to show you the very first, very first, African violet of my collection. I've never had an African violet before. This one's a lovely beauty. She's got the most lovely purple flowers with a, with a little bright yellow center. And I thought, well, I'll try to get her on camera just before her flowering finishes because her flowering is about to finish. Now, I don't know a lot about taking care of these but I do know you have to water from the bottom. So she is in a self-watering pot. Um, again, I haven't really changed her from the pot that she actually came in. So this wicks up into the main pot and then feeds that into, into her root system. And I love these self-watering pots. They're really, really good. You can see how much water is in there and you know you can also see the bottom of the inner pot, which is really handy because you don't want to fill it up too too much and you don't want to have a few centimeters sitting in water it's really good that you can actually see under these pots these pots are, are fantastic so yeah i have an african violet that i've added to my collection so there you go gorgeous purple on the underleaf too so that's it from me today thank you for coming along to a little bit of an orchid haul or a plant plant haul don't forget to like this video on your way out give the like button a little bit of a tickle she likes a tickle and if you would like to see more content like this do subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next video